Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, update on the injuries. Ray Ray McLeod is still out with the knee. Uh, as you saw, Shaq had a hamstring yesterday, and, and Taryn Johnson had a shoulder. All those, uh, in particular, Shaq and Taryn still being evaluated. Um, and as far as the quarterback position goes, I know you guys are will be asking that shortly, if not with the first question. Um, you know, I'm still still going through it. Uh, certainly respect where everyone's coming from on it, and um, you know, con- going to continue to evaluate where we are. Um, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, um, and taking it one step at a time. So with that, I'll open it up to your questions. Sean, so you know, you, you, I understand you say the decision isn't made yet. My question is, if Nathan is still being considered, how do you sell to your locker room, your veterans in particular, that he gives you the best chance to win? Well, I think we all, when you look at the tape um, and what I've looked at to this point, I've been through it a couple times already. Uh, we all have to do our job better, whether it's the quarterback position, my position, uh, just to name two of them. Um, but you could go around our team and say in all three phases, we didn't play well enough to win to win the football game, not even close. So um, a lot of feedback, important, important and valuable feedback to us early in the season, which is, which is important and valuable for us as we move forward. It allows us to be decisive in some areas and, um, and go forward with a great learning opportunity uh, for our young football team. What did the film tell you about your offensive line play? I thought there's there's some plays that, um, you know, in particular in pass protection at times it was good enough, and there were some other areas it wasn't good enough. Uh, you know, overall for our football team, Tim, I felt, you know, effort. I didn't question the effort. I didn't question the intensity. Uh, they were playing hard right to the very end, which I which I appreciate. Um, that doesn't happen everywhere. And uh, it's, it speaks really about the, the men in that locker room and on this football team and their character. Outside of those external factors like you mentioned, whether it's the offensive line, coaching, the other parts of the offense, what did you see specifically from Nate in this game? Well, I thought he made some, some good decisions and, and some decisions that he would like to have back. Um, you know, overall, as an offense, we didn't move the ball, and, and you saw that on, it, on, on TV or tape or whatever you looked at uh, in person. You know, we, didn't, we didn't have success on offense, and you can't go three and out and not win the field position game and put the defense back on the field. So. Uh, wasn't good enough, and uh, from an offensive standpoint, wasn't good enough from from a uh, defensive standpoint or a special team standpoint. So, um, but again, we've got to learn from it, um, get what we need to get out of the film, and move forward. How much of Josh Allen's and your plan for his development will play into your decision whether or not make him be the starter this early in the season? Yeah, there's a lot of things that'll go into that decision. Um, you know, I mean, to get into it all the things I have to look at and consider. It's not just as, as simple as, as some might think. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of hands in that jar, and I've got to look at the overall team in all three phases, and Josh's development being one of them. I um, have a lot of confidence in Josh, um, and I have a lot of confidence in this football team, and we'll continue to grow, continue to develop. We've got a lot of young players on this football team. Um, the path to success is never a clean one. Uh, it, it takes ups and downs, and and it, and it takes you on a journey sometimes that not where we wanted to be yesterday, but we have to continue to, to grow and develop this football team, and uh, we'll continue to do that. When you get that type of quarterback play that you did yesterday, how hard does that make it to you know, stick with that calculated and patient approach that you talked about with Josh? Well, when you look at the quarterback play yesterday, um, this is a quarterback-driven league, and, and I thought there were times where we did some, some things that um, you know, were, were on target and sometimes where we weren't on target or on time. And, and so uh, we have to get better in every area of what we're doing, not just the quarterback position, but every area. Coach, what were some of the um, issues you identified breaking down the secondary um, that allowed um, some of the things to happen, especially early on in the first couple of drives there? Well, it's a little bit of a little bit of continuity in there. Um, you know, with uh, Phillips new out there and Taryn was new, and I thought uh, there were moments that they had that were positive and some things they'd like back. Um, you know, A, are we putting them in position? B, are we executing the fundamentals and techniques that go with playing in the secondary? And then, and then I would end with, are we getting enough pressure on the quarterback as well? So that it's complementary football um, in terms of the front end and the back end working together, as you've heard me, have heard me say before, Sal. So. Coach, how, how are you looking? Comfortable with your numbers there going into this week right now? 
Well, we'll see, Brandon and I, and that's part of the, the process of, of Mondays, getting back late last night, watching the film, continue to watch it over and over again, and, and evaluating our roster, um, not only now, but also going forward and, and uh, with an injury to Taryn and, and um, you know, who the next man up would be. Um, we'll get more and more information back on, on the injuries as we move forward throughout the day here and tomorrow. Um, but uh, as far as our overall roster, you know, this is, it's, it, it, we're still trying to just in the, in the second year here. So we're still trying to get this thing right and, and uh, continue to build uh, for the future here. John, you prepare and focus so much on the season opener because it's the next game for months. And maybe unlike the 37 point loss to New Orleans, maybe it's easier to kick that off because you had just played the game and now you have another game coming up. How do you make sure that guys don't carry this forward or you know, because in some ways so much more emphasis put on an opener than there is on some of the other games during the season? Well, there's, I think there's two answers to that question, Tim. Is The first is make sure we get out of this game what we need to get out. Make sure we see in our, in our objective with our evaluation of what happened, um, first and foremost. Secondly is uh, it's one game, and we have to keep things in proper perspective. Um, we're still finding out who we are as a football team, um, and, and we have to continue to grow and learn from the film learn from the experience that we went through in all three phases yesterday as coaches and as players, and we continue to build this thing the right way um, and doing things at the right time. So if you do things the right way uh, and make the right decisions, uh, usually good things happen in the course of time, and, and that's what same with the roster. We're building this thing in a certain manner, um, and like I said, just to, to uh, in the second year here to get this thing going, get it done the right way uh, for the future. How much more do you have to pay attention to the young Yeah, it's, that's an interesting question and a good one. Um, there's, there's kind of two tails, two ends of the spectrum, right? So you got the older guys who have been through things like this before, been around the league a long time, and you got the other end of the spectrum, which is the younger, inexperienced guys. This is their first time going through, A, their first NFL game, uh, B, a loss um, on opening weekend, and then a loss, of, you know, like we had, and uh, we're not a lot of, not a lot went our, our way. So. Um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to manage. Part of being a, a good coach, in my opinion, is being part sports psychologist and, uh, and getting your team back mentally to where it needs to be to put in a good week, uh, a week in, as we prepare for the Chargers here. Carlton Dines, you guys have one catch for 10 yards. Are you satisfied with his effort level? I, d I don't question the effort, as I said earlier, Jay. I don't question the effort uh, of anybody on the field. Uh, are there some plays overall as a football team that, that uh, a guy stood out here or there where we didn't – uh, do enough, yes, but overall, I thought the guys played hard, um, Kelvin included, uh, for four quarters, and and that's that's believe it or not, not what you see around the league in in a game like that. And so, uh, that's one of the first things I looked at when I turned on the film last night when I got on the plane uh, to go home was the effort and the intensity of our football team in all three phases. John, what's your message for the fan base after a loss like that? Well, they deserve better. First and foremost, and, and we're working hard to get it right. Uh, like I said earlier, it's not an easy process. Uh, just being in the second year, it's not an easy process. Um, trying to get this roster right and, and developing the right habits on and off the field. Um, but I can promise you that no one's going to work harder to get it right than we are. What went into the decision to make Vontae Davis inactive? There's a lot that went into that decision. Um, you know, number one is getting the right guys on the field that we feel are the right guys, um, in, in particular in game one. Um, and with respect to Vontae, uh, as it relates to that DB, the numbers you can have up um, doesn't you know, really give us the flexibility in special teams or the ability to move inside. Uh, like, for instance, Taron goes down and, and have that flexibility for Vontae to go inside. So Philip is able to do that a little bit as well. So um, when you count numbers in terms of who can be up and, and overall numbers on the, on the – uh, on the active, um, we got to think about all those things. What sort of the, is Vontae healthy, to, healthy enough to play right now? Yes. What sort of the philosophy behind only having four corners tested? The philosophy of only having four. Yeah. Well, like I said before, as it relates Matt to numbers overall, you got to balance out the roster. Mm -hmm. So we can have six six corners active, but 
and they only have two wide receivers active, right? So you got to, there's a, balance, a delicate balance between special teams, defense, and then offense as well in terms of the overall numbers. Coach, how did you feel Trent Murphy came through yesterday, both from a conditioning and playing level? <clears throat> Well, you know, it was, let's be honest, it was his first real game action. So uh, we had him on a rep count, uh, which is why you didn't really see him as much late in the game. Um, I thought overall we got through his first game um, in terms of coming out healthy, which was, which was the number one goal. So it's something he can build from and will build from, and we look forward to increasing that uh, this week through practice and, and next week's game. Do you see any need to bring in a more experienced quarterback? We're always going to look. Uh, always going to look. Brandon's always looking at different ways to improve our roster. Um, I'm not, never going to rule anything out, but Brandon's always looking at different ways to improve the roster overall. When you look back at the off season, do you wonder maybe if you should have had a quarterback with more experience than the two guys you have going into the season? Well, like I said, overall, this roster, um, we're just in the early part of the second year here, so uh, to say it's a finished product uh, would be not being honest with you. So we're we're early in the stages here of, of getting this thing going the right way, um, and uh, we're going to continue to look at things. And and uh, but this is who we have, and I have full confidence in who we have. Looking back on your history in the league, regardless of whatever role you were in, when do you feel like you really get to know who your team is? At what point in the season do you find out what you have? Yeah, that's another. I mean, that's another good question, and and something that as coaches we have to continue to work through early in the year, every year, is finding out who your team really is and um, trying to win every game, but also trying to win uh, as you – and it gets stronger so you're playing your best football, as you've heard me say before, when the leaves are coming off the trees. Now, that doesn't mean we don't try and win week one or week two. Um, we're trying to win every week, and, and we've got a lot of work to do. Um, we're going to put that work in each and every week moving forward. Into the season, you know, half the season, to really know. Depends probably on, on your team. It really does, Tim. And I mean, if you have a lot of continuity, I think you know your team. I mean, you look at Baltimore's defense had 11 starters back that we faced yesterday. So they probably know their team um, coming into camp a little bit more than some teams know their teams, you know, just with the, with the turnover. So, um, you know, so we, it's, a, it's a challenge every year to get to know our football team and, uh, and bring a team together. And that's what we're work, part of what we're working on right now. I know you mentioned that you don't question the effort, but when you watch the film, how tough was it to see all the penalties that you guys had, especially in you know, important situations? Yeah, they're, they're inexcusable. You can't do that and play winning football. Uh, in particular, the pre-snap, uh, pre-snap penalties um, and some of the – we didn't have as many yesterday, but the post-whistle ones are non-negotiable, inexcusable for us. And um, – you know, want to play aggressive football, but there's a delicate balance between smart, um, smart football and and uh, not smart football. And you can't you can't be in first and eleven or more, uh, first and twenty, first and fifteen. That that's that's tough sledding right there. Can you take us to the moment when you when Deion Dawkins had the unnecessary roughness you mentioned, especially post whistle? That was a big <coughs> Did you have the rule, or is it just by that 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 specifically you made you? Well, each, each case is, is going to be different, Tim. And in that situation, uh, Dion's a young player uh, just in his second year, the early part of his second year here. And I felt it was an opportunity for – it was a teachable, teachable moment. And um, we had the ball somewhere around the five-yard line and uh, possibly four-down territory, and, and we took ourselves out of position. And um, I felt like it was a teachable moment. I appreciate Dion and the way he handled it as well. Um, I'm sure it was a, a lesson learned and something that he will grow from moving forward. Well, to the question I answered earlier, Matt, just about um, a number one: Are we putting them in position? And and b, um, you know, are we are we challenging the way we need to challenge and attack? And then and then c, are we executing with with uh, base fundamentals? And um, and the complementary football between the front end and the back end has got to work um, work together. Yesterday, I was looking for you in this game. In in what regards? I think it was 
Um, it w really wasn't eye-opening for me. I've been in this league a, a long time. Uh, you go through highs and lows, and that's that's part of the um, the journey on the way to success. The way I like to like to see it and call it. Um, it's never a straight line. Um, it's never as clean as people think it is, and it's something that we have to continue to work through. And we've got a young team in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we've got some older guys that have been around, but. But overall, our team is young. We've got a lot of first and second year players out there getting meaningful moments, meaningful reps and experience. And um, we have to continue to create fertile ground around here so that they continue to develop. And we'll learn from, from that tape. I'm convinced of that. Uh, you saw what we did with some of those moments last year. And, uh, and we learned from those. And I'm, and I'm convinced and confident that our team will continue to, to learn from, from these experiences. Sean, you're big into establishing the right culture within the whole organization. When you have a loss like that and really no wins ahead of it, like you did last year, when you went through the, the tough losing streak in the middle of the season, you had some wins to draw back. Mm -hmm. When you don't have that heading into the season, what do you have to do to keep everybody afloat, everyone on board, to keep them going? Well, we want to we want to make sure we that we um, isolate the positives from the game yesterday. Hard to hard to find on the surface, but when you go back into it and you look at there were there were good moments. Um, within each play that we had um, that you want to celebrate and say these are up to the standard um, that we live by around here and, and what we expect from our football team down in and down out and then continue to um, continue to communicate the overall vision of our football team um, and the culture that we want to have and what that standard is on a day-to-day -day basis and, and that's really what in my opinion uh, part of my job is as a leader. Is that tougher though to not let those negative thoughts creep in your players' heads when you don't have any success to draw on? Well, we have success to draw on. Uh, I've been around the league 20 years, so I've got, I've got uh, and, and a lot of our players have success to draw from, some of our veteran players in particular. That's where the leadership of this football team has to get out in front. It's easy to lead when things are going well. It's, it's a challenge, and, and really, to me, the essence of a leader or leaders is what happens in moments like these, and to me, they get out in front uh, of the team and, and lead. One last one, please. Okay, uh, Tremaine Edmonds on the, there was a series in the second quarter where you guys, your defense started to settle down a little bit. You guys started flying to the ball a little bit more. He had a four-play sequence where it was sack, you know, zero yards. It was technically a sack, mm -hmm. an assisted tackle, a pass breakup, and a forced fumble. Um, what did that do for the defense? Obviously, there's 10 other guys there with him to help him do it, but that this 20-year-old kid, at a time when your defense was, well, he flashed. I thought throughout the game, to your point, Tim, and and uh, really appreciate the way that he played. In particular, once things settled down, um, you know, there was a lot going on yesterday earlier in the game. Um, I think that, that, that it snowballed a little bit, as I mentioned after the game yesterday, and and that's hard to pull pull yourself out of, right? To calm everything down and play, in particular, as a signal caller on the defense to get everybody lined up, communicate effectively and then play well yourself and, and play fast and for a young player to do that really bodes well for his future. Thanks. Thanks. All right, thanks guys.